It's bold, beautiful, and gold-plated. The Claude DeLong mouthpiece by Selmer Paris, it's something to behold. But as one of the most expensive classical mouthpieces on the market, is it worth it? Let's find out. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses and product reviews, please do subscribe. We have some very cool topics coming up in the weeks ahead. Now today, we're talking about the Claude DeLong mouthpiece by Selmer Paris. It's a classical mouthpiece with a very hefty price tag. We're gonna talk specs to a playing test and see if it's a good value for your money. Now, the first thing you will notice about this mouthpiece is it's a looker. It's got elegant lines and a profile with curves in all the right places, like the Selmer concept. And the branding and logo on this mouthpiece even look nice. But what's really striking about this mouthpiece is the gold-plated metal ring that lines the entire bore of the mouthpiece and even extends and is beautifully integrated into the shank. From every angle, this is a good-looking mouthpiece. And the metal bore does give it some heft. It feels like a weighty mouthpiece. It feels like a quality product. I know weight doesn't equal quality, but it tricks my brain into thinking it's a high quality product. Now, whether that weight affects sound, the mass affecting sound, you guys can debate in the comments below. I don't know, but it is really an interesting mouthpiece to feel and hold in your hand. It even comes in a little black wooden box with gold accents and a quote from Claude DeLong himself on the inside. I don't speak French, so I have no idea what it says, but I imagine it's inspiring. And it does bear the signature and was made in collaboration with Claude DeLong, the French master of saxophone himself, who's been teaching at the Paris Conservatory since, well, Rick Astley was a famous artist and not a meme. 1988 for you young kids. Now, true story, I was packing up with my saxophone quartet at the end of a dress rehearsal. Our tenor player dropped his mouthpiece, it hit the stage, bounced, and Claude DeLong caught it mid-air before hitting the ground with cat-like reflexes. It was really impressive. That's a true story. It's an impressive mouthpiece, and I'm not surprised coming from the master himself. Now for the specifications, it's nothing special. It's got a round chamber like the Selmer concept and a medium-ish tip opening at 1.65 millimeters, which is a bit more open than the Selmer concept, but not as wide as their S80 C-Star. But interestingly, it's not as free-blowing as the C-Star. I personally use a Van Doren Blue Box 3.5 on almost all classical mouthpieces. On this guy, I had to go down to a three. It had a little bit more resistance, but not in a bad way. And I haven't played on a three since, well, Rick Astley was a famous artist and not a meme. So let's get out of nerd mode and see how this sounds. The first thing I was struck by is the easy singing quality in the upper register. The sound felt focused, but not strident. It felt full-bodied, but not stuffy. It's difficult to talk about tone color and describe it using words, so I won't. But overall, it felt like it had a really beautiful, gentle singing quality in the upper register. It also has plenty of power. You'd have no problem carrying over an orchestra or even a band if you were playing a concerto. Articulation felt crisp and well-defined, but it never felt barky or overly aggressive like on the S80s, can at times, in the hands of a young student. It always felt refined and pretty comfortable. From the week or so I've been playing it, I felt it had a very homogenous tone from low end all the way to high end. And that is a quality you really want and a classical mouthpiece. You want a homogenized color from top to bottom. And there's no question this did a really good job of keeping that.
Intonation was nothing surprising. The usual suspects on your horn will still be sharp or flat. This won't magically fix that. For long stretches of playing, though, endurance-wise, this felt very comfortable to play. There are some mouthpieces that can tire you out as you try to keep the register leaps under control and fight intonation. This was very comfortable to play even through long stretches of Bach. And now it's time for me to eat crow. On the Saxophone Academy podcast, I had postulated that the metal lining inside the mouthpiece would cause condensation issues, making the sound spitty and moisture gathering on the reed. I was wrong. The metal lining starts below the window, and as such, I didn't notice any excess moisture gathering on the reed and did not affect my sound in any way. If there was more condensation, I didn't notice it. So I was wrong. If you know a good recipe for humble pie, let me know in the comments below. Now for the gold-plated elephant in the room. At a suggested retail price of nearly $500, it's nearly twice as much as the Selmer Concept and nearly three times as much as the Van Doren AL3, which is a good little workhorse classical mouthpiece. Now you can find it online between three and $400 when you can find it in stock, but that's still a hefty price tag for a classical mouthpiece. Jazz pieces tend to get more expensive anyway. Is it worth it? I think so. I think for the advanced or professional player, this is just a really excellent mouthpiece. I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. It's a little bit more resistant than beginning players will probably feel comfortable with. And also given the price tag, doesn't make a lot of sense for the beginning player. But I really enjoyed playing it. It was comfortable from top to bottom and I would have no problem making this my primary mouthpiece. In fact, I want it. Don't tell my wife. So in the comments below, let me know your favorite classical saxophone mouthpiece. And if you've tried the Claude Delong, let me know your impressions. I'll see you next week. And until then, go practice. <laughs>